Is it coming home? Miles, is it coming home? I actually think it might be. That England win on penalties against Switzerland. It was a bit of a difference to the games we've seen before and the system was changed up quite a bit, wasn't it, Miles? There are a couple of them there that are carrying us through and like Saka in particular, yeah. man of the match performance. That's what you need at this sort of level. Those moments where someone of world-class quality, it feels like, will, will get you to the to a semi-final. So the system changes were one thing, but it seemed like a mentality change more than anything else. Southgate kind of just put players on the pitch and hoped one of them would do something. And one of them did, and it was Saka. And it seems like it was fitting for it to have been him because he's probably been England's best player over the last two, three years, I would say. The approach was a lot more forward thinking and that was just really refreshing. This system definitely improved England's play going forward. And I think the, the performance of Saka is a real testament to that because he thrived on it in some ways, didn't he? And mm. let's talk about him for a moment, his goal and just his contribution as an England player now, since especially since the last Euros final, where he was crestfallen, wasn't he? We all felt for him. Mm. But he's come back with a penalty shootout goal in the World Cup, a penalty shootout goal in this Euros, mm. and consistently being one of Arsenal's top players as well. I think it's probably fair to say this, the first name on the team sheet now for England, isn't he? What an absolute world-class player we've got on our hands there. Yeah, I think he has to be, particularly when you consider that he started this game completely out of position and had yeah. said openly it wasn't really something he wanted to play, but he will do it for the team and he made it work. And honestly, it did feel like the goal came from, instead of following any tactical instruction, just him knowing, yeah. look, I do this every week for Arsenal. I'm just going to do it here. You can't tell me that there isn't something stopping him from doing that in the rest of the games. He's got that in his locker. And I've not even really seen him try it so far this tournament. That tells me that's a coaching decision rather than the player. And yeah. I think when the substitutions came in, if you think about those substitutions, he took off Konza, Trippier and Mainu for Shaw, uh, Palmer Eze. and Eze. Mm. Now you tell me what formation he's playing there. Because he's taken off two defenders and a midfielder for two wingers and a fullback. <laughs> yeah. But do you know I what, know what I don't know about you? I really enjoyed it, mate. I thought it was great. Oh, yeah, it was, it was great. But that's not how, it's not, it's not sustainable. It's not a managerial decision, is it? That's just, I'm going to whack as many players on a pitch that could do something as possible and hope one of them does something. And it's funny that it was only at that point that Saka felt the freedom to cut inside a shoot on his left foot so that we know he is notoriously good at. And I'm really glad that he had that moment because, yeah, he's such a likeable young man. He's a, an example for so many kids out there trying to play football at any sort of level. Like he's an absolute role model, comes across like a great personality and a wonderfully talented footballer that England need to just absolutely yeah. treasure and appreciate rather than kind of think about whether, or we, should we be making room for Foden and Bellingham and not playing him? Or should we be getting Cole Palmer on instead of Saka? Don't insult him. That no, Honestly, that is ludicrous. Any talk of Cole Palmer starting ahead of Saka can only possibly be coming from Chelsea or maybe Spurs fans. And even then, they're <laughs> deluded. Like, Saka is, is phenomenal. 